So we're moving on to this next topic, which is about um, environments, ecosystems and evolution, things like that. And uh, this is definitely one of the topics that I find a bit more tricky. And if there were any short answer questions in these in this area, then I'd definitely skip them. However, given that you do have some MCQ questions or multiple choice questions, I think it's important that you do know a bit of basic knowledge about this, even if you're similar to me and just despise this topic. So for this first question, we're going to look at uh, a definition. And this is a definition that you should definitely know. What is a community? And they've given a list of four options. And the way that I like remembering uh, the, f the four main different types of um, of nomenclature that you need to use is I like writing out S P C E. So like space kind of thing. So think space. Except what this means, so I'm just gonna put down space like right next to it. So you can just think of space because it's uh, just an acronym to to learn uh, the different like layers of uh, you know, organization of different organisms. So the first one is species. That's one that you should know. And the definition of a species is a group of organisms. Actually, I won't write it up there, but it's a group of organisms that can interbreed and produce fertile offspring. And so, you know, every all people, they're all of the same species. And then after that, um, you've got a population. So you can even draw on a Venn diagram, something like this. So, you know, you've got like species here. So that's relatively small. And then after P, P stands for population. So this is a group of species, uh, a group of species living in the same area. A group of species, group of organisms of the same species living in the same area. In an area. And then, then we come to C, which is actually the definition but which we're looking at today. And straight away, um, what you know, notice is that community uses population, population uses species. So species you need to know the definition of. Um, population is a group of um, organisms of the same species. A community is a group of populations. So it's a bunch of different animals that are of different species that are together. Populations. So straight away, if we look at this, so if it's a group of populations, then what can we get rid of here? So right now, A and C have both said organisms, which is incorrect. So straight away, we can get rid of that. So we can get rid of A and C. How about B? A group of organisms, uh, a group of populations living and interacting in a food chain. Not really a food chain. It's more of interacting in an area. So we know that the correct answer is D for this particular question. So just to remind you, a group of populations, uh, a community is a group of populations that are living and interacting in an area. And then finally, the E of the SPCE is an ecosystem. And just how population use species, just how community use the word population in its definition, and just ecosystem also uses community in its definition. So in this case, ecosystem can be defined as um, a community and its abiotic environment. Okay, so that means it's talking about the living part, which is the community, a group of organisms that are, to, that are together of different species, as well as its abiotic environment. So this is something that, uh, that is not living. These might include like, you know, rocks and, uh, you know, pebbles, the air, fire, etc. Okay, so fairly simple question, but we put a bit of theory into that as well. So if we move on to the next question. We're talking about the units of a pyramid of energy. So when, so you should all be very familiar with the pyramid of energy, which um, maybe look at something a bit like this. This looks a bit like a food pyramid, to be honest. But um, as you go from one layer to another, uh, you you lose energy due to um, due to heat loss and energy use for metabolism, etc. But on the bottom, you have producers. And then you have primary consumers, secondary consumers, etc. Okay, 
So the thing that you need to know about the units for a pyramid of energy, it's just something that you need to know. The units that they talk about is energy per area per time. Okay, so E-A-T. So think E-A-T, eat. Okay, energy per area per time. So we have to think about it. Okay, so first of all, kilojoules. Let's look at the different options. So kilojoules, kilojoules, joules, joules. So good, that's all energy. So we've got the E. E is available for all of them. Now we're talking about per area. So this one up here is, um, is it per meter squared. Okay, so meters to the power of minus two is the same as per meter squared. So that's good, that's talking about area. How about this next one? This next one is actually meters to the power of minus one. So that means per meter. Is a meter an area? No, it's actually a length, so this is incorrect. Same with the, the ones down here. So, um, so this one here, it's a bit fuzzy here, but uh, if we as let's assume that that's um, a, a minus two as well. So this will be correct as well, because we're talking about per meter squared. Remember that m to the power of minus two, that equals to per meter squared. It's like you take this, this uh, the, the negative there and you just chuck it over here to make it a per. So, okay, um, whereas our last one is incorrect as well. So this is incorrect because we're talking about just meter squared. So correct, this is an area, but is it per area? Is it per area? No, it's not per area. There's no slash in front of it. So then that, that one's incorrect. So we straight away we know that the ones which are incorrect are B and D. And then finally is the unit of time. And the time that we can compare between A and C is with one that's got S to the minus one, which is per seconds, so it's the same as per seconds. And the other one is uh, in option A is per year. And A is correct because you have uh, a year as a better amount of time than a second. Like a second is also a unit of time, but the more appropriate answer is A. So just to recap, uh, the answer is kilojoules per meter squared per year. And that's exactly what this equals to. So just remember EAT for the units of the pyramid of energy. So energy per area per time. And the per is very um, important as well, the per slashes. Okay, so a couple more questions. Uh, these are some of the more fun questions actually. And we've got a food chain on the left and we have to talk about what will happen to the different populations um, if different uh, organisms were to increase or decrease. So, fairly straightforward question, we're going to go through it anyway. What will happen to the sizes of the population in the food web, web above if the sea otter disappears? So if this guy disappears, you expect everything above it, including sharks, to decrease because they have less prey, and anything below it, such as the sea urchin or the, or the st sea stars, you'd expect them to increase because you have decreased um, predation on them, they don't prey as much on them. So let's have a look. A. Large fish increase and sea urchins decrease. So straight away we'd expect sea urchins to increase because sea otters won't eat them as much. So not, not A. So B. Abalones increase and sharks increase. So if we look at this, sharks increase? No. We've, we already said that they should decrease because they have less food for them. Sea urchins increase? Yep, that sounds good. And how about kelps decrease? So kelps down here. Um, and we would expect kelps to de decrease because um, because of the sea urchins increasing, there's less things preying on them, then uh, they have more, the, the sea urchins have more opportunity to eat things. So the more that they eat, the more kelps that they eat, the more that kelps decrease. So this seems like our correct answer for now. Let's look at D. Sea stars decrease and sharks increase. Straight away again, sharks increase, that's a false answer. So the answer is C. Which organism in this food web is both a secondary and tertiary consumer? Let's look at this. So A, the large crab. So we've just got to track down this large crab here. So is it a secondary consumer? Yeah. So what you do is you find out the producers, which are at the very bottom. I'm just going to underline them here. So we've got one, two. So yes, it is a secondary consumer. Is it a tertiary consumer? It goes from one to two to three. So yeah, the large crab is definitely a are both a secondary and tertiary consumer, it seems correct. Let's have a look at small herbivorous fish. So small herbivorous fish here, it's a primary consumer. It's a primary consumer here. Um, but it is not a secondary consumer because it's not... Uh, yeah, it's not... It's, yeah, it's not um, eating anything else, so it's not this. How about sharks? So a shark, 
we track back. So one, two, three, four, five. So it's it's quite it's much higher uh, level of consumer than just um, tertiary. So we know it's not shark. And how about microscopic plankton and algae? So that's right down here at the bottom, and we know that that's a primary producer as well. So just to recap, because I might have confused a few people with a large crab, um, with a large crab answer, it is the planktonic invertebrate. This means that the, they are the primary consumers. Then going up to here, and they are the secondary consumers. These um, sessile, sessile invertebrates. And then finally, if we go up here, then that means they're secondary consumer. But alternatively, we can also go from here to here, to drift algae and dead animals, and then up to here. And then that means that they are tertiary consumers as well. So another food web question here. Once again, fairly straightforward. See if you can do this first. What is the trophic level of the bobcat in the food web above? So we've got the trophic level of the bobcat here. So straight away, um, we know that it can be a, so not a primary consumer because that's a quail, but it can be a secondary consumer. So let's look at secondary. Okay, so secondary in A, B as well as D. Okay, um, um, what else is there? So it could also be a, let's see, if it goes from to deer mouse, that means deer mouse is a primary consumer. One with a little o, primary consumer. Then you could go to the gopher snake, which is a secondary consumer. To the roadrunner, which is a tertiary consumer, and then finally the bobcat is a quaternary consumer. So it seems like a secondary and quaternary level consumer is the correct answer, and that indeed is the correct answer. So what is the energy transfer level from the kangaroo rat to the weasel shown in the food web above? Um, so we have to isolate these first, so let's talk about the kangaroo rat as well as the weasel. The kangaroo rat, rat we're going to circle here, as well as the weasel over here. And the point that they're getting at is that um, you ha don't think about these as you know, the kangaroo rat and the weasel, but think about them in terms of um, the different level that they are, what trophic level that they are. So firstly, the kangaroo rat is a primary consumer because it um, consumes the chaparral plant um, down here. And then the weasel is a secondary consumer. So then what we want to compare them with, uh, what we want to compare them with is another primary consumer and another secondary consumer. So let's see, three times greater than the energy transfer from the road runner to the bobcat. From the road runner to the bobcat. So, you know, you would expect the energy transfer to be greater because you are going from a primary to secondary consumer. So there would be more energy transfer. However, in this case, is it three times? Uh, I'm not really sure. So we'll put a dot next to that one. How about half the energy transfer from chaparral plants to the meadow mouse? So from here to here, um, you know, possibly as well, like uh, you, you'd expect less energy to be transferred from the kangaroo rat to the weasel because you are going from a primary consumer to a secondary consumer. And let me just illustrate that with the, the pyramid here. So as we go from, um, it's a very ugly picture there, but as we go from primary producer to secondary, uh, to primary consumer, to secondary consumer, then the energy transfer levels um, actually decrease. So the most the most energy that you get is actually from the primary producer to the set to the primary consumer. And then as you go upwards, then you actually have less and less um, energy being transferred. And that's why if you looked at this ecosystem, you'd have the bobcat. You'd have very few bobcats. You'd have a low number of bobcats because the energy transfer that it takes to sustain this bobcat, um, you require a lot of primary producers at the very bottom. So once again, we don't really know. How about C, a quarter of the energy transfer from the quail to the bobcat. So straight away, once again, when it says a quarter of the energy transfer from a primary to a um, secondary consumer, yeah, so Probably not, not this one, because remember how we have the kangaroo rat is indeed a primary consumer, the weasel is indeed a secondary consumer, so we'd expect the energy transfer from a primary cons consumer to a secondary consumer to be about the same. So in this case, a quail is a primary consumer, and a bobcat can also be a secondary consumer as well, um, but it's saying that it's a quarter of the energy, so it's not quite correct. So D, approximately the same as the energy transfer from the meadow mouse to the opossum. So meadow mouse is a primary consumer over here, opossum over here is a secondary consumer. So approximately the same energy? Yes, definitely. Straight away, that's the most correct answer by far. And that's what you will put down. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out, just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions, as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.